Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will implement explicit model state validation using attributes such as is valid, values, and error count. We will also explore other properties related to the usage of the model state. In the previous lesson, I explained the theoretical part. In this lesson, let's proceed with coding. First, in the project's solar systems controller, let's copy the insert single action method. The rest of the code can be commented out, since we won't be using it in this lesson. Paste the copied method and we should remove all unnecessary parts. And the parameter needs to be changed to directly access the model, so the DTO needs to be removed. We also need to include an if check to explicitly verify the model's validation using is valid attribute. If the check fails, we will return a bad request response. The methods return will provide content if the validation is successful. The controller logic will be relatively straightforward, and the if check will verify the incoming data. You can implement this using a comparison operator with a false boolean literal or by simply negating it. As we already have the model created in our project, we can use it for this lesson. In Postman, we need to send a POST request and include in the body the necessary properties the model expects to receive. The model contains three of them, and the image is of a nullable type, so it can be skipped if necessary. In Postman, we can add any dummy data. The key is to ensure that all properties align with the model. Now let's send the request. Since all required properties are provided, the if check is not triggered. Thus, we received a successful reply, confirming that the model state validation has passed the test. To trigger an error, we can exclude one of the required properties, such as the name. Let's remove the name property and repeat the request. The model state object is now populated with errors due to the missing property, causing the model state validation to fail as we expected. It's important to note that this response isn't a result of the if check we implemented in the action method logic to explicitly verify the model using is valid attribute. Instead, this reply originates from the section of the controller, where the API controller attribute is declared. As we discussed in previous lessons, declaring the controller as an API controller type using the API controller attribute leads to implicit model validation. In Netcore 7, the part involving model state is valid is simply not reached, because the model validation occurs earlier, engaged by the API controller attribute. Even the previous request, which resulted in a successful reply, was verified by the API controller attribute. To trigger explicit model state validation, we need to comment out the API controller attribute. Now, with API controller attribute commented out, if we send a request from Postman, the reply will come from the return statement of the if check, demonstrating that explicit model validation works perfectly. Model state is valid returns a boolean value, either true or false. The is valid property is of type boolean, while model state is an instance of the model state dictionary class. Let's take a closer look at its definition. As evident, model state dictionary contains the validation state of a model, enabling access to the model state. This includes errors and validation information associated with the incoming data. Currently, we have just received the if triggered statement a bad request and an informative response text message. To examine the nature of the reply and its errors, we can make use of the values property within the model state. If we send the request now, we will receive extensive information about errors. To enhance readability, the bad request, if you recall from the previous lessons, take the second parameter, allowing us to iterate over the errors. The most concise approach involves accessing the errors property using link. We can use select menu to iterate over each item and retrieve errors for every item. Upon sending a request, we will now observe the specific part of the error message indicating the requirement for the particular property. This message is customized by us, while the other part of the validation message is derived from the errors body. Additionally, this part of the message is customizable by using the required attribute in the model class. To implement this above the name property, we include the required attribute and within the parentheses specify the message to be shown in the error body. Upon sending a request, the custom message will be displayed. Additionally, within the retard statement, we can incorporate error count and the isValid attributes. 
To achieve this, we will create two variables that accesses the necessary model state properties. These variables will be then referenced in the return statement to provide an informative response. To trigger the method's return statement, let's reintroduce the name property in the postman and send a request. As a result, we will obtain an informative message within the action method's return statement. Thanks to customized explicit model statement validation, in case of an error, we will receive proper notification. In the next lesson, we will implement implicit model validation using API controller attribute and model constraints attributes. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!